Hi, everyone. It's Teresa with Golden Owl Consulting back again, bringing you the fourth session of my courses for the Entrepreneurship Academy, bringing your campaign to life. Today, we're going to talk about storyboarding, scripting, and scheduling. I'm going to review what a storyboard is, how you do it, and what you can use. I'm also going to show you a sample of a storyboard that I've worked on for the Andrew Mazza Foundation commercial that I've been showing you throughout the course as example building up to your video. Then we're gonna talk about scripting, writing your scripts, your prompts, what kind of verbiage you're going to use, what kind of message you're going to tell through your scripting. And then we're going to talk about scheduling. That is scheduling pre-production, day of production, your editing schedule, and then finally your release schedule. So first, I'm just going to describe a storyboard. Storyboarding is the concept of a visual representation of your video laid out into different components and individual panels. So it's going to be a series of organized drawings. There's going to be camera angles, dialogue, uh, different details. If you're going to shoot food, if you're doing a restaurant, if you're going to shoot a product, if you're doing a store, within a certain sequence that will all be in there. And you'll better understand that when you see the storyboard that I'm going to show you shortly. Um, storyboarding is basically a trial run for your finished video. So you don't have to leave it in the order that it's in. What's really great about the software that I'm going to show you is that you can drag and drop and change the sequence to make it work what's best for you. And this could happen before or after the video and that's where editing comes in as well. But laying out a good storyboard prior to shooting is going to make sure that you get all the angles and the shots and the conversations that you wanna have and that you're looking to get to put into your video in the end in the editing process that Dan had gone over. Um, a tip that I have for you is to use a free storyboarding software, or what you can do is lay out the sequence on post-it notes and you can easily re rearrange those on a wall or a chalkboard and kind of lay your storyboard out the old school way. So this is Trello. Um, Trello.com is a free storyboard software that you can use for your project. Um, you can have your teachers create an account and go in and create free storyboards in here up to a certain amount. First thing I want to point out um, when using this is this purple button. And you can make this any color that you want that suits fit for you. Um, in here, when I see this purple button, I'm aware that there's notes in the description. So I know to open these tabs up because it truly, it only gives you um, the label here, the title, and then the descriptions are in there. So I do know uh, it's very, very helpful to get started if you do make yourselves aware of this note tab and try to incorporate it as much as you can into the slides where there are notes like this, for instance, um, everything's a note. So uh, first things first, let's talk about labels. So you can see each of my cards here has different colors in these labels. The labels basically help you to see what you're looking at. So for audio, we're using red. You could see here is a visual, that'll be a photo. The length of time goes under time. And then here we have multiple directions which include a photo, an audio, and a camera shot. So this is going to actually be a transition. So if you look at these, you can make the labels any color. You can change them here, edit the name, edit what the label is, select your color, and then use those throughout your storyboard to keep things in order. I also like to put things in order. As you can see, my audio goes first, then what my visual is going to be, the length of the spot for that section of the storyboard, meaning I am opening my sequence with my commercial, my video is starting with this diesel jam flyer and it's going to be up for about four seconds. So I know how long each one of these cards is going to take me and I can roughly judge the length of my commercial or video based on this storyboard as well. And that's very helpful when you are filming for time, certain social media platforms for certain aspects have certain time limits on things. So it's really good to keep that in mind as you're doing to, um, try to track the time and about how long you'll want a certain shot on the screen. And that'll also help you to make sure you get enough shots and enough footage and video and photos for the entire video to be done. 
So one important thing that I want to note is for you guys for the audio. When you are going into these businesses and filming on site, there may be radio on in the background. That's something you're going to want to ask the business owner if they can turn off for the time being, just because it's going to run into some copyright issues if you have audio in the background and you're promoting this video without the rights to that music. Luckily for the Andrew Mazza Foundation, the Circle Drive-In does have audio rights to um, XM radio. So we're able to use these songs throughout our video. However, we have to promote it only through the Circle Drive-In. So we can share their post, but we can't put the post out or the video out on our own under the Andrew Mazza Foundation without the Circle Drive-In in there because of those copyrights. So once you select your audio, that's going to be your dialogue, a question and answer. Um, one of the business owners or an employee telling their story. That could also include different, um, if you're going to put words on the screen, different captions on the screen. So that will be your audio. That's the first thing to consider. What are you going to be using for this sequence, for this scene in your storyboard? Again, as I said before, this is going to feature this image of Diesel Jam Truck Show as the song, This Is How We Roll, is playing. And it's going to last about four seconds. Once that four seconds is over, this is my transition card. So what happens here is the image is going to fade away into a series of Diesel Jam photos. Note that the chorus is still playing. So we don't need to change the audio here. We just need to edit in the photos, which brings me to my next shot. This will be the next thing that you see on the screen of the video. This will be, again, the same music playing. You just want to make sure that that's there across the board so you know what's going on for that shot. In here, you can see that I do have some notes. These are all of the photos of certain trucks and certain areas of the event that we want to show. So I've selected 10 areas, and then I just have to grab the 10 photos. And what's really great about this is you can actually attach the photos right in. And that's how you can see that I put these photos in of the flyer. And you can do that from your computer, your Google Drive, Dropbox. You have a lot of options uh, to go for that, that you can use to attach images. And you're going to want to keep everything into these detailed little cards so that you know each shot and each component that's going into it as you go. Again, we have the length of time. It's going to be about 20 seconds. Now you can see here that I do have this note panel open as well for time. And each photo is going to last about two seconds, making that a 20 second spot on the video. So once that's done, I'm going to fade away into a video of the 2019 Mobile Dino winner from the truck show. That is going to be the audio from the video. So you can see that there's a change. There's also a note in here um, that we want to look at, and that's cut the Florida Georgia Line audio. So we know at this point we're using the audio from the video that we've already recorded and are using. In here, you can attach the video. Um, I just sent this right along to our editor, so it's not attached in here, but down the road when we get started on producing this, I will attach it using this button again. Very simple to do. So as you can see, I'm not going to walk you through each and every card, but you can get the gist of the storyboard. Each side, each section is a different slide that you're going to have in your video. So. I'm going to show you quickly just how to add these in. And when you're making these, you can create, make another list or you can just click the top part here. So right up here, you could see you can either add another list and it'll give you this option. This list is existing. I'm just going to edit it from here. And let's pretend that we're doing a restaurant. So your first scene is going to be the exterior of the restaurant, okay? And then you're going to add a card. And the first thing we're thinking about is audio. For your audio, you are going to have the owner speaking. Uh, maybe this could be about the business hours and the menu. And as you're doing this, that's going to be the exterior is your shot. So you're going to put exterior of restaurant and that's going to be video. So we know that it's not audio. I'm sorry, we know that it's not photos. We know that that's going to be a video shot, moving shot of that. What you can also do is, oops, what you can also do is add in here your time. So if the owner is going to talk for about 15 seconds, you know that you need 15 seconds of length for the video and audio. 
And then lastly is your transition shot. So once you're done with the exterior of the restaurant, the owner has finished up talking about what he wants to talk about. Now he wants to show off the food. So you're going to transition into the kitchen area of the restaurant, okay? So I set up these cards for you here. Um, I would suggest as you're doing them to go into each one as you're doing it, not list them out this way if necessary. And just make sure you're adding those notes so you're covering everything. But it really truly is however you prefer. You can list them out first like I just did and then go back and make your notes if that's easier or you can do it one by one as you're going. So what you wanna do in here is the owner speaking about the business. Well, let's say that we sent the owner the script. So we're gonna put a note in here and label it with a note. And we're also aware that this is the owner speaking. So that's going to be your audio as well. And then we can click out of there and you can go through each of these. This is going to be video. So you're gonna label it video and then click out. If you choose that one of the labels isn't working for that spot, you can simply unclick it here, uncheck it and it's gone then. So you can make this very customizable and it's very, very easy to use. And this is how you would set up your storyboard for your videos. And another thing that's very helpful when you're doing this is that you can actually move these. So if I wanna switch my slideshow and have this other video first, I can simply do that, move the cards, and it's really easy to use. Back and forth, very simple, very self-explanatory. Uh, if you're running into issues with setting this up, great resource is YouTube, and you can YouTube some Trello setup videos. Uh, when I first started working with this software, I did do that and they were very helpful and I learned very quickly. It's very easy to navigate. Uh, you can also add over here, you will have to start a trial for these, but there are other options that this has, such as a calendar and a dashboard, timelines to actually time out step by step the video that you're doing and where you're going to be for the video. Um, this is great if you're doing large productions, but it really won't apply to you. It is just a feature that's there. So your scripting is asking questions, telling stories or dialogue. Again, you have to choose how you want the dialogue and the audio to go for your video. Is it going to be more than one person talking? Is it going to be a question and answer? Is it going to be more informational? Are you going to use more of a story? Um, so for this, I'm going to break it down for you into the um, businesses that you're going to feature. So for the peanut bar, for instance, you would want to talk to Mike, uh, the owner at the peanut bar, and see if he would want you to do shots in the kitchen, outside while people are eating, if he wants to do an interview and talk about how he became part of owning the peanut bar, this family-run business. Um, do you want to feature that it's a family-run business? Do you want to talk about just the food and the specials that they have? Do you want to pull at people's heartstrings with the amount of workers and have the workers there that have been really working endlessly um, throughout the pandemic in the last year to keep the business afloat. And it it's all up to you guys. However you want to tell that story, it's all up to all of you individually to come together and make a decision on that. So um, as a group, talk about it and see what kind of theme you want to go with here. And I would suggest reaching out to Mike. He is fantastic. He knows his marketing very well also. Um, so he knows a very, very good way to portray his story and how he would want this to go. And he would be a great asset. And I know Mike personally, he would be definitely willing to help each of you um, as you're going through this and help you as a group as well to decide how to film the spot for the peanut bar. So some of the components that you're going to consider when writing these scripts and working with your individual business owners is asking relevant questions, such as their hours of operation, any specialty products they have, their backstory and their history. How did they start? Why are they there? Where are they located? Where they are? How you can order um, or buy from them or stop in? And what makes their business special? You really want to ask these questions and get to know their business so you can, as you're writing your script, portray their business accurately and the way that they talk about it. And you can portray it through their eyes, uh, which is again, why I said to reach out to your business owners and talk to them before writing your script so you can learn more and understand a little bit better about the message you're trying to portray essentially for them through your video. Um, after that, 
Uh, we're going to get into scheduling. So once your scripting is done and you have everything laid out, how you want to go about question and answers, if you want to do a dialogue one-on-one, -on -one, if you want to do just a straight story from your client, you're going to have all that written down. But now it's time to schedule everything. So once you have your storyboard finished, you know all the shots you need, you know where you're video is going to be headed and what it's going to look like in the end. Now you have the script, you know everything that everybody's going to say, where you need to put that and how you're going to film it. And now you need to talk about the scheduling portion. So you'll need to reach out to the business owners uh, and participants to schedule your shooting days. If you are shooting multiple businesses, it's a great idea. You can see the tip on the bottom to um, contact one have your full shoot, see how it goes, and then contact your other businesses. Because one thing that I've run into with some videographers is that they like to uh, book a little too close. So you wanna make sure that as you're filming, you have enough time to compensate for having to shoot something multiple times or having to wait for shots. Uh, business owners are still working as you're there. So you may need to stop uh, and give them a few minutes to do something and then they come back to it. So. Be sure as you are filming on site for the first day, you give yourself enough time to get all the shots and make them good and make sure you have everything you need and make it also convenient for the business owner as well. So um, prior to um, the day of the shoot, you wanna reach out to them to make sure that the schedule time date works for them. If not, you can reschedule it with them and work with their schedule, but reach out to them with the date is best to start so you have something to work with and it's not whatever's best for you. Leaves a lot of confusion open. So uh, reach out to them. Hey, is May 7th a good day for you that we can shoot these videos? Great, we'll be there from 11 a.m. to probably 2 p.m. if that works for you or something like that. Uh, if you have questions or a script prepared, be sure to share that with them prior to the filming. Also, I have no, I have been on the end of questions and I have also had the opportunity to ramble on uh, like I do here. So it is good to know. I always write out my course and write out the scripts before filming and before going into it, which is also going to be super helpful for your business owner. So they're comfortable with things and you can get them a little more natural as you go. Uh, let them read the scripts, let them have the questions, and let them know that it's okay to give feedback. If there's something they see that doesn't really jive with them and their business, let them know that it's okay if they ask for that to be changed and reworked into the script. Um, and then again, like I said, don't book too close, don't double book, and give yourself enough time. If you think that something might take an hour, schedule it for two just to be careful, and if you're done early, great, you're done early. And the last thing is that you want to be sure that all of your team and the participants that you're including from the businesses, the business owners, employees, they all have a confirmation email with the scheduling details. So you wanna make sure that this information is going out to your business owners, your classmates that you're working with, whoever's in charge of sending this email, your teachers, anyone that will be there and involved in that video shoot for the day will need this schedule. So make sure that they have it um, and it's simple as copying an email and sending it or forwarding the email additionally. So uh, that is all that I have for you guys today uh, as far as the storyboarding and laying out your video. I hope that this helped. And if you have any questions, please, please, please just ask. I know that this is a lot to take in in a short amount of time and a lot goes into this. Remain calm, remain patient. Everything will work out really well if you just follow these simple tips and if you have any questions along the way, please have your teachers reach out. I am a resource for you in any way and capacity that I can help. Uh, if you need any help getting in touch with some of these business owners and working with some of them, I can help you with that as well, how to kind of open the lines of communication like we talked about in the networking commercial, or I'm sorry, the networking video, and we can go from there. So please let me know if there's anything I can help with, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you again.